right? No, she doesn't mean anything to me. I love you. I'm in a relationship with you. You're prettier than her. You work better than her. I've said that over and over, but, but a gun reviewer has to review other guns. I can't just always review the War Poet pistol. And baby, I want to. I love you, right? But I have to be able to review other guns. And she's not as pretty as you are. And you work better than her. I carry you. I don't know what else to say. I have to, I have to do the review. The internet is counting on me. I have to do it. I'm going to do the review. I'm going to do the review. Alright, what's happening folks? It is a chilly morning in Georgia, but it's a great day to review the Palmetto State DAG. interested in this gun because it costs like 300 or 350 bucks this was 350 because it came with tritium sights it's even lower closer to 300 when it's just bone stock that's pretty impressive to me because 300 350 dollar pistol i expect that to be a really crappy gun so the standard the bar is set way down here we'll see how this performs do a general overview specs and features we've already run the gun a bit as you saw in our opening montage and we'll also go through four positives and four negatives and conclude whether this is a good value uh, for the money, in our opinion. You can do whatever you want with that knowledge. Before we jump into any of that though, I'm gonna share a humiliating yet really funny moment doing a like competitive shooting montage for this. It's really important you always do a walkthrough before a competitive shooting station. I'm like, ah, screw it, I'm gonna hit it cold. And I forgot the course of fire and well, this happened. Beep! <laughs> that was not a real beep. <laughs> oh, I'm just supposed to shoot. I'm supposed to shoot right here. Sorry. <laughs> Ah, that really hurt a lot. I'm supposed to do this other one right there, right? Oh, I mean, that was full man behind it. Oh, let me see that again. Oh, is there a mark? Am I marked up? It's a little red. The only thing that's been injured here is some pride. That's it. Oof, I know, I'm still walking that off. My pride limping through. So next time anyone asks me, John, you want to do a walkthrough? I'm like, yes. I do, I'll do the walkthrough. All right, so let's jump into this gun. And first off, let me get my trusty pointer tool, which is in no way product placement. And we'll go through front to rear sight, top to bottom. So first off, I went with the tritium sights. They are outlined in white paint. I would prefer the rear sight to not have that white paint outlined so that the front sight really pops and I don't have that visual distraction, but I'm not gigging the gun. Some people really like that. I don't, but I bought the gun and so there it is. But tritium sights, a-okay. I really like the front cocking serrations. I really think that should be on all guns. It's not a really big thing, but it's just neat little aesthetics. Makes the gun look a little bit better and people like doing press checks and stuff like that, uh, then that is uh, there. Overall, I'd say the gun looks a little nicer than a Glock. And clearly what Palmetto State's doing is they're taking a big savage swing at Glock's market share and producing a very similar gun. And we'll get into that more later at a lower price point. So moving on, you look down here at the beaver tail and you have this coming out farther than a Glock, which really stops almost right behind the rear sights. And that's going to help make sure your support hand doesn't ride up too much and get that slide bite. And so I think that's a really good idea. Uh, guys, the trigger is something I don't love and it's something I don't hate. It feels just like a stock Glock 19 Gen 4 trigger. It's based on the same distances to prep, uh, the break, and then the reset, all about the same distances. So I was able to fall into this trigger very, very easily. It wasn't particularly smooth or really gritty. I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just a trigger uh, to me. All right, that one broke at five and three quarters pounds. All right, that one broke at a five and a half just slightly over five and a half that time. 
Uh, really like the grip. It's a little bit tackier than a Glock's grip. You also notice it doesn't have all the finger grooves that you'll see in like the Gen 4 Glocks either. It's just got this one nub, which I thought was good to keep. The gun also comes with cutouts on the side so that you can more easily grasp a mag that's sticking and be able to rip that clean. And the controls are only on one side. I don't have ambidextrous controls. Uh, but again, it's like 300-ish, 350. I didn't really expect them, but you lefties out there, you can vent your outrage in the comments right now. Say, pa Palmetto State, why would you be so bigoted and discriminatory toward you lefties? Let, like lowercase l lefties, not like socio-political anarchists, we hate American all things lefty. I didn't mean it like that. I meant like you, you are left-handed, you know. We have to cut that. No, keep it. Yes. Like you are me. Yes. Barrel is DLC coded, 3.9 inch in a one to ten twist. Uh, also, the internals of this are based completely on Glock, so you're supposedly be able to interchange parts, and uh, it keeps all the same safety pieces here. So you can look in here, and you can see you still have that exact same trigger block safety and the trigger safety as well. Uh, one thing you may notice is the guide rod is in a stainless steel when in a Glock it'll come as plastic. In my Glocks I never see them exploding into dust anyway, so some people will be like, oh that's great, well, I don't see my plastic ones breaking. But uh, anyway, some people may want the weight and they're measuring little micron differences and I just don't really care. Uh, but some people might say, mmm, shiny. The gun only comes in 9mm at this time, which I only really wanted a 9mm, so I don't really care. And it comes with a single 15 uh, round PMAG. All right, so there's some general features. Now, before we go on to positives and negatives, I wanted to reveal a couple things that went sideways with us on the range. One is the slide would lock to the rear for me, and this is not really just the gun. This is just guns sometimes do this because my uh, support hand is so high up on this gun, it can interface with this slide stop lever and it will lock to the rear even when I'm not actually out of ammo. This is why I don't ever shoot Gen 5 Glocks, but Gen 4s and almost everything else I'm fine with, Gen 5s don't. And the reason why is this slide stop lever sticks out a little bit too much for me. Now, if you have a bigger polymer ledge right there that kind of protects that from that upward pressure, that's really good. However, this one wasn't quite big enough for me. Many of you will not have this problem. I do have it though, so it was something that I ran into a couple times when it locked to the rear when I didn't want it to, and I just in, I immediately went to an emergency reload, even though I'd only shot a few rounds out of it. Another thing that happened is this sight came loose. And so some people were like, hey, it's a blue Loctite thing. I'm like, yeah, but I shouldn't have to do that. It should already come anchored in well. It shouldn't be wobbling on our first few hundred rounds out of it. And so I got to gig it for those two things, though the first one has a little bit more to do with my shooting platform. The second one is a little more inexcusable, but those things happen. Now let's go into the positives and negatives. So the gun takes Glock magazines and also has interchangeable Glock internal parts. However, it's not going to properly fit a Glock holster. This super sucks. And it's because this trigger guard's all, all crazy. Let me compare it to just a normal. Glock 19 for comparison. There they are. You see that beaver tail sticking out a little bit more. You also see this palm swell is different than a Glock. You see that trigger guard is much different. Now that I'm looking at this, I'm remembering I did not like this magazine button. You got to be a little bit more exact with it and it's punchier. Whereas on a Glock mag, it's got a much bigger fudge fat and you can kind of roll into it more, which I much prefer. However, it's a small thing, and again, it's coming down a little bit more to user preference. Very similar. But now because of this crazier trigger guard here, it's not going to go into this holster very easily. I could force it, but I don't want to damage a really good holster, so I'm going to leave it like that. I bet if you had a holster like a Glock 19 holster that you didn't mind sacrificing, maybe you could loosen retention a little bit more and just keep forcing it in and out, in and out, and then maybe it'll work. But as of right now, I'm not really seeing a lot of uh, holster companies that are accommodating this. I'm sure if this is a hot seller, which I bet it will be, uh, then it's uh, th th they'll catch up. So, But as of right now, that sucks, and that's a, that's a big negative. Oops, I gave away a negative. And that's part of why I like my Shadow Systems gun, and I've always been shooting Glocks before 
that for years and it's because I can get this just massive war chest of parts and accessories and all my magazines so when I go out to the range I've just got a bag filled with magazines. I spend no time in my shooting practice stacking mags. I already come with them loaded and then you can go watch a movie with the misses and stack mags so you're not wasting valuable training time. That's a really big deal to me. So I, I really hate starting from scratch and having to find a new holster for every gun I get. So uh, there's that. Big negative, I don't like that it's harder to find a holster and my old holsters don't work. All right, another negative now is for you lefties out there, no ambidextrous controls and it doesn't look like you can even turn this mag release around like you could in a Glock, so no joy. All right, positive number three. I really like the grip on this. I like the swell, the palm swell coming out here. I like the amount of tackiness. I don't want something overly aggressive because you want your hand to stick to the gun. You don't want your gun to stick to your hand, else when you're doing weapon manipulations, whether you're letting that gun turn slightly so you can really have access to your controls, or whether you're switching hands on the fly, I don't want my gun stuck to my hand. Some people really want the tackiest grip humanly possible and it's because they really haven't mastered that grip and they don't really understand how to grip a gun well and to apply the correct pressures even if your hands are in the right place. So get training. Check out our uh, links down below because we do training and stuff. How about that? I didn't plan on doing the plug, Evan. I did the plug. I did the plug, I said the, the I said the training thing. Third negative for me is I don't really like the buttons. I want a bigger ledge that's really protecting that slide stop lever and also this mag release button. It's just too pointy, too thin. I've gotten spoiled on the bigger ones, which I normally run on my War Poet gun. Last positive, and I think it is absolutely the biggest selling point on this gun is they got it down 300 to 350 bucks depending on which model you buy holy smokes that is very very impressive as i said before my standard for a 300 dollars gun is in the toilet that that is a crap gun uh so 303 ambitious again power move palmetto state however though i gave psa an attaboy just then let me go ahead and knock them down with a fourth negative and that ha that's I have quality control concerns. Within just 200-ish rounds of shooting this gun, the front sight was already ready to pop off, and so we had to tighten that thing back down, and that's not cool. I also cite the firearm blog on YouTube. They were doing a review, and the trigger pen was walking out. Also, Pew Pew Tactical on their YouTube channel, when they loaded a complete mag, it was having a difficult time properly feeding when, it, when the mag was filled to capacity. I didn't have either of those two problems, however, I'm wondering at that price point whether they're cutting out some important quality control. I'm not saying that they are. I need a little bit more data, but let this be a little bit of data for you guys uh, so that you're aware of it and that you're looking for it. All right, guys, so in conclusion, overall, for the amount of money you're paying for this gun, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I think that is an a terrific value. The gun was running well. It was shooting accurately. There are some QC issues and concerns that I have for this gun in general, but overall, I, I think they'll work out those kinks over time. Uh, I do. And as it stands right now of like, man, I, I pretty, pretty good contender. I mean, like way to go. I'm going to stick with the stuff I already got, but I'm, I'm trying not to be snobby and be like, guys, they did pretty darn well here. I'm pretty impressed. Again, I expected for that price point, utter trash, dumpster fire level firearm. So way to go, guys. You did it. Uh, folks, if you enjoyed this video, and even if you didn't, just because I asked very nicely, pretty please like, comment, uh, share, because Big Tech hates us and doesn't want us to grow. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, toggle notifications about all. Check down below this video for relevant links that help us out and help you out. And consider joining our Warrior Poet Society network. We have an app and streaming service when we get shut down here, which is just a matter of time in our estimation. That's where we're going. We could really appreciate it. It got really entertaining shows binge worthy even and we're about to spool up more and more content we've got so much already filmed just stuck in the editing room it's coming and also uh, uh, our classes as well you can get good firearm training all kinds of different classes are on the network that was a big plug i should be ashamed but i need your help so i'm saying it anyway guys thanks so much for tuning in train hard train smart stay free love you guys see you next time
the only way to get good at gunfighting is to do gunfighting. There's no other way around it. You can practice draw strokes ad nauseum. You can get really good at fundamentals and emergency reloads. Maybe even run around a flat range shooting at some steel targets. But there is no substitute for force on force training. What we do in Pistol 3, aside from teaching some really important skills, some combative elements, a little bit of tactics bringing in, is we allow students to revel in the chaos and the confusion, the adrenaline of a real force-on-force -force encounter. 